the second city of Argentina, bustling with life and enthusiasm, where buildings are draped in pink, fruit stalls are architectural phenomenons, and where yellow taxis are the emblem for Cordoba. These army of yellow vehicles line every street and prepare for onslaught at each junction. On initial inspection among semi-rise new builds and spontaneous coffee bars are grandiose buildings marking Argentine heritage. This architectural diversity really reflected the diversity amongst the people of Cordoba as they come from all wells of life of European, North American and Asian. This church was designed by a Flemish architect in 1645, but not quite as old as the Iglesia Cathedral, which began in 1577. A Jesuit crypt discovered in 1989 when a telecom company dug to place new lines. It was restored, but unfortunately, while the restoration provided a glimpse of history, much of the truth seemed missing. North of the central plaza, the streets beamed with excited shoppers. For me, one of the largest shopping districts. More shops than many malls in Europe. But I must add, some of the smallest stores I've ever seen. Cordoba is value for money and it's worth checking out the special lunch deals. Barcelona caught our eye in a flamboyant Argentine style. This eatery served excellent food at incredible prices, only 25 Argentine dollars. Checking out the rest of the city is quick and easy by foot. It's worth checking out the art gallery with a collection of paintings from the 19th and 20th centuries. It also hosts an excellent contemporary arts gallery. If you want a day trip, then it's worth exploring nature in the surrounding countryside. Again, it's another bus, but plenty of bus journeys will take you to stunning areas. This two-hour journey would drop us on a remote corner of a highway two kilometres from a Condor viewing spot. Welcome to the National Park in Argentina that's here to protect the condors and the natural environment. Unfortunately, we've come on a very wet day. Uh, the rain turned in as soon as we arrived, but we did manage to see a couple of condors on the way up this mountainside. Uh, we might be able to see some other animals that are here, so I'll try and get a little bit of filming and see what we come across. Uh, we've seen uh, some guinea pigs so far and some ants and birds. Sorry, but that's about it. Anyway, we better get a move before it gets too wet. This is it. The only eight seconds of footage I managed to capture of the condors before the storm set in. But we did get the chance to learn more about the condors at the dedicated restaurant for the magnificent birds. We tried to capture as many animals as we possibly could, including two huge fighting bulls. The most awe-inspiring animals had to be the smallest, ants, forming a huge stream across the path as we wandered along. Just look at the sheer size of the articles they're carrying. It suddenly dawned on us that such large animals like condors would not be stupid enough to be hunting those smaller creatures hiding from the rain. Yet here we were, humans, the most intelligent species wearing shorts and t-shirts and pouring rain on top of a huge hill getting soaked and blown by the wind. So in the rain we managed to hitchhike. The return journey was fast and furious and the driver compromised the soaked winding roads at speeds of over 120 kilometers an hour. Yes, uh, we're very, very cold uh, on the way back from uh, the National Park and it looks like the camera is steamed up. Yes, <laughs> it's need to sort you out. We arrived to a partly flooded Cordoba.
the Aldea Hostel. Now that's our tip if you're going to get accommodation in Cordoba. We managed to get a double room here for 110 Argentine dollars per night, inclusive of breakfast. It had a fantastic atmosphere and the staff there were incredibly helpful. You also have a chance to be able to cook your own food using either the barbecue or the kitchen downstairs. So, the Aldea Hostel, that's our tip. Cali Sucre, the home to one of the liveliest, most popular bars here in Cordoba, is hidden behind these black doors. It's beep, open from one o'clock till five o'clock in the morning. The crowd does not get busy until at least two. Bustling inside, there'll be dancing and a whole host of entertainment, including plenty of drag shows. It's one place not to be missed. By night, this university city becomes an incredibly romantic place, with lights lighting up the statues, monuments and buildings. However, for us, our favourite stop so far was over, and we're heading back to the capital, Buenos Aires, in hope to find something slightly different and unique. Follow us on our next stop.